Hello and welcome at metacrypt.nl. I've received some questions uh, from people if we could give a very quick speedy tutorial on how to use LaserCut. In principle, when you have installed LaserCut with the dongle MetaCrypt has provided, and you start up, you will see this screen. Depending on the machine, you will have here your X and Y axis, and this, therefore the size of your working bed. In this case, it's the MQ3050, 5030. Here at File, you can create a new one. And in principle, you will get a blank like this. You can open an existing file which you already made. You can save it or save as. And what we use most of it is import. Like for example, a DXF file. We click on the DXF. But not only DXF, you can import. It's also pictures and then doped illustrated JPEG files. Give. There's a whole list of options you have. In this case, I'm choosing DXF and I'm opening up the part. It should import the cup holder version. And there it is. If you made the DXF correctly, you have a one-on-one -on -one copy of the DXF into the file, and you now can play and set up the remaining settings. Machine options. This area is more for the professionals or the better ones that want to play with it. Principally, you find information on the motion card, the working table, and the y-axis in case you have a rotary you could change here. And the feeding, I would say most of the time, if you have the settings from MetaQuip, you don't need to really play in this area. Edit, most basic functions for copy, undo, and zoom in, zoom out. What is a very needy function is center to table. In case you want to manually align something, you can bring the products. And you can see the blue cross, which is the center of the whole setup. It's now sent to table. We can add our own lines or rectangles. Just simple click on it and put it into the product. Circles will go by Eclipse. And to make it a perfect circle, if you press Ctrl G, you get the size. And you can make it a perfect circle by giving it the same dimensions. You can also draw text, handy if you want to do some engraving. Along with the curve, in this case it is questioning me this because the circle was still selected, so I could put the text around the circle. In this case I just want to start with plain text. I will press no. I select the height, you can later on scale it still to a bigger size or smaller if you want. For example, in this case 25. And there's tons and tons of different options to choose for. Let's this go down takes Gara month. And the word is made equip. There we have made equip. If we now want to size it because it's too big or too small, we first go upstairs here next to the brush of refresh. We go to pick. And if you take the angle until you have it here, you can stretch it in any directions. But if you keep the control a button on your screen on your keyboard pressed, you will scale it so it goes in proportions. Okay, let's delete these examples and go back to our DXF. Um, split line you can use if you want to have a line later on and add to it really split it so you can break up the line in sections if you want to delete a certain part of it and with a line you could even align further the parts if you would like to tools data check what I use a lot of it uh, is unite lines and especially in this case you can see if I zoom in to here that you have the DXF imported, but it sees all separate lines, so circles and straight lines as separate components, which would, which can mean later on in production, a machine's first this, 
then jumps to a different location, then does the next one. Takes up more time than you want. Also for engraving, since you have so many lines, it often doesn't see it as a close body and therefore could not recognize it. So I select them all. I can go to Tools. I can unite my lines. In this case, I take any line intersection within 0 0.1. And the difference now is if I click on the outside, you will see it's really one line. There's some offset curves, if you want to really offset it, you can invert colors. Half bitmap is very useful when you have a picture, you want to really make it black and white, so you can then, from grayscale or for colors, change it into black and white solutions. Um, invert colors is handy if you really want to flip the picture over instead of having the black and white, where you want to have the contrast not in the white but in the black. Laser, we can define the cutting route if we want to. In general, this program really takes a very optimal uh, route. Set the laser origin. At the moment, you can see this blue dot here. That's the laser origin where it uh, has been placed right now. But if you would like to change it, you have the options here from the center of the product. Most people work with right down, right top, left up, left down. Because it's easiest on the plate, you know where you want to start. You can check from there if you want to have, uh, if you have sufficient room in your material. In this case, let's put it on the right top. You can directly already see it move. Further laser, you can calculate. It does some calculation. Funny enough, I never see really the result of the calculation directly in my screen because you would like to know maybe up front what is the roughly estimated time. Although I have to say this is not always as accurate. The way to make it visible is to go to this clock and say estimate working time. And it will give you in this case a working time of six minutes. I know from cutting it on our machine it takes slightly longer. But it's a good indication if you're stuck for hours behind your machine or it's a quick job you can do. Really, it does not make sense to use this estimated working time if you also take into account that if you have to unload and load the machine to use these kind of values for calculating your cost. You can also uh, do array options if you want to have multiple of these designs. So in this case, I could go on Y two times. And I want to have a gap between them that they're not touching, say, two millimeters. And you can see already automatically, I now have two versions. Put it back at one. Okay. You can go to simulate. With simulate, it will give you, if it calculates again, give you a rough idea of how it wants to cut the part. Take some time always to upload. And what you will see in a second, there we go, that it will first go from that position, cut the inners, then it cuts the outers in this case, and it's the same for the other one. If you really want to have control on it, it's often smart to really change layers. So instead of working with two or with one layer, you select the outer and go down here, give it a different color, the blue one, same one for here, the blue one. The order here is not defined by the order what you have in this row. This you can still change. So if you later on think, hey, I want to move it up or move it down, the option is still there. You can choose here what you want to do, cutting and engraving. Uh, great engraving and hole you barely use with these lasers. In case of cutting, you can later on select your speed, your power, your speed, is linked to the amount of pulses it goes, so it's not in centimeters or inches per minute. Um, and you have the option, if you go deeper, to go to check. Especially changing laser frequency with the light materials like paper sometimes makes useful, or makes sense to lower those values to up to 5 kilohertz or 5,000. Most of the time I do not really actively change these kind of values. 
same settings there. If the machine would be on with the X, Y, and Dayton, you can move it around. Our machines, most of them have automatically have a uh, working area, which you can also uh, move the, uh, the bed up and down. So this you could control once you have the, the computer connected to the uh, laser cutter. You can control it from your computer. Laser, you give it a pulse, but most time you don't use it. Run box is like a test. You could uh, put your pointer at the material. If you believe you can make it, maybe you don't have to test it, but if you want to test it, if you press run box, the machine will give you the outer layer, which is then literally like a square box going all around on the material, showing you what you will use. Similar with clip box, and there you can have some distance in between. You. If you would press start, it would directly start to work and, and really do the lasering, pause, and stop. But to really first use this, you first have to go to download. When you press download, in this case, we will get an alarm. That's a different alarm that we're looking at. This alarm I should be looking at. The alarm is for the fact that, that currently my computer is not connected to the laser. Therefore, you, I currently still can do export file. In that case, I can download it to a file. If I would copy that on a memory stick, I can stick the stick in the side of the machine. And the machine would recognize that there is a file available to be uploaded into the machine. But if the computer is connected, you could also go to download current and download the current drawing as it is into the machine. In case there are issues, it could be that Metacrypt can provide you a new config file and then you will download a new config file to the product. You could also export the config file in case we are asking you to submit the config file to see if there is anything wrong with the machine. There are more functions in it. Um, I would really encourage you to play with it. It's a very basic program, um, but good to, to work with. It uh, goes fast, uh, very flexible in, uh, in handling all these kind of different formats you can import. And if you have more questions, feel free always to contact us at metaquip.nl and I will try to see if I can help you. Have fun and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.